It was great to meet you last week in Nevada. And thank you, Secretary Holland, for hosting this White House uh, Conservation Summit here. You know, I want to thank you for uh, all, all your fellow Cabinet members and the federal employees across agencies to carry out this historic conservation plan across our nation, because it is a big deal. <laughs> We're grateful to have incredible partners, including members of the Congress, tribal leaders, conservation advocates, all here today. And, folks, it's my first week in office. I issued an executive order establishing the country's first-ever national conservation goal. And we called it the America, America the Beautiful. And it's a nationwide campaign to protect and conserve, by 2030, at least 30 percent of the lands and waters that support and sustain our nation. And last year, on Earth Day, I signed an executive order to protect America's forests and to harness the power of nature in the fight against climate change. I'm here today to talk about an incredible progress that we've made. You know, it's my first year in office, we protected more lands and waters than any American president since John Kennedy. And, and with, with the help of members of Congress here today, I signed a bipartisan infrastructure law and the, the Inflation Reduction Act, the largest investment in climate, environmental justice, and conservation ever anywhere in the world. For the past two years, these investments have helped protect our iconic outdoor spaces, preserve our historic sites, and make our nation more resilient to the devastating impacts of climate change. We also uh, uh, relied on important partners to help us meet, meet these goals. Farmers and ranchers have implemented critical conservation and stewardship practices across 50 million acres in private land and areas the size of the state of South Dakota. In Alaska, we protected the Tongass National Forest and the Salmon Bristol Bay of Bristol Bay. We, re we restored the protection and status the previous administration rolled back and Bears Ears National Monument. The Grand, the Grand Staircase Escalante, the North, the Northeast Canyons and, and Seamount of, of the Marine Monument. Last year, Last year, I had the honor of visiting Camp Hill, Continental Divide in Colorado, and adding that to the list of national monuments for the first time to be added to my administration. It matters. This matters because when we conserve our country's natural gifts, we're not just protecting the livelihoods of people who depend on them, like the family farms, outdoor recreation, businesses, rural communities, welcoming visitors across from all across the country and around the world, as that matter. We're protecting the heart and the soul of our national pride. We're protecting pieces of history, our, 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 telling our story that will be told for generations upon generations to come. <clears throat> you know, our national wonders are literally the envy of the world. They've always been, and they always will be, essential to our heritage as a people and essential to our identity as a nation. That's why the budget I released early this month includes new funding to increase access to our natural areas for Americans from all backgrounds. We're going to continue to take aggressive steps toward conservation with the big actions I'm announcing about to announce today. First, I'm proud to use my authority under the Antiquities Act to establish the — and I, I want you to know it's a big deal — the <laughs> Havanaqua May, I, I'm, I'm having trouble. Thank you. I got it. I just know it as Spirit Mountain in Nevada. It's one of our most beautiful landscapes, and it ties together one of the largest contiguous wildlife corridors in the United States 500,000 acres. Breathtaking. Breathtaking deserts, valleys, mountain ranges, rich in biodiversity, sacred lands that are central to the creation story of so many tribes who have been here since time immemorial. Look, you know, it's a place of reverence, it's a place of spirituality, and it's a place of healing. And now it will be recognized for the significance it holds and be preserved 
forever, forever. I look forward to visiting myself, and I want to thank my friends in Congress who fought so hard for this day to become possible. Senators Jackie Rosen, <laughs> Catherine Cortez Mastow, Representative Susie Lee, Dina Titus, and a special thanks to you, Mr. Chairman, for your partnership. Look, second thing we're doing is we're protecting the Kastner Range in Texas as a national monument. Thank you, Veronica Escobar, Representative, for your leadership in this. Now, I hope you'll still have reason to call me, because you call me a lot on this one. I, you know. <laughs> this is managed by the United States Army at Fort Bliss, and it tells the story of the tribal nations who live there and the members of our armed forces who trained in those lands. It's also a place of incredible beauty. And right now, right now, as winter gives way to spring, Mexican gold poppies are bursting into bloom. You can see, I wish I — what I wanted to do is have all this in a video behind me here, because, <laughs> because when you see it, it's just breathtaking. Transforming desert plains and hills into a sea of vibrant yellow and oranges, framed in the rugged mountains of the blue sky. The people of El Paso have fought to protect this for 50 years. Their work has finally paid off. And now we'll clear the area of old munitions, create access to the outdoors for communities and parks, and we're going to green spaces that are harder and harder to find. And importantly, Kastner Range will be preserved for future generations. Folks, the third thing we're doing today, I'm, a, I'm issuing a presidential memorandum directing the Secretary of Commerce to immediately consider designating 777,000 square miles of the Pacific Ocean, southwest of Hawaii, as a new, as a new, new national marine sanctuary. You know, that's an area larger than Alaska and Colorado put together and three times the size of Texas. That's no small amount of land <laughs> underground. It would make it the largest ocean area on the planet with the highest level of protection. And it will help us meet our goal of conserving — the goal I set when I got elected — of protecting and conserving 30 percent of our oceans. It's a network of islands and reefs where waters are filled with the most of the diverse — the most diverse marine on the planet — marine life on the planet. Sharks, rays, marlins, tunas, turtles, whales, ancient coral forests, many that are threatened and endangered right now, but won't be. And I want to thank Brian — Senator Brian Chance and Maisie. Maisie, where are you? There you are. There, I want to say — Maisie and Representative — and Representative Ed Case and Joe Kikuna. And many — and many Native Hawaiian Pacific Island leaders, you know, look, who have worked tirelessly to protect our oceans. I want to thank you. I mean, I, I genuinely mean it. Thank you. It wouldn't have happened without you. And that's not all we're doing today. Earlier, you heard Secretary Holland uh, announce that she's taking steps to modernize the management of America's public lands, to put conservation on an equal footing with development, to safeguard more places for people to hike, hunt, camp, and fish. And we're going to be moving ahead today with a strategy to conserve — to conserve the wildlife carters across agencies and across our entire landscape. Whether it's a National Park Service or the Bureau of Land Management or the Forest Service or private landowners, we need to be coordinated to make sure the habitats we're conserving along migration routes, no matter where or who's in charge of that land. And today, we're releasing the first-ever United States Ocean Climate Action Plan to harness tremendous power of the ocean to help in our fight against climate, the climate crisis. We know — we know, and you well know, we can reduce emissions by building offshore wind farms, better protect our coastal and fishing communities from worsening storms, 
changing, uh, changing fisheries and other impacts on climate change. Um, and I'm also committed to working with the tribal leaders here, as well as Senator Patty Murray, Maria Cantwell, and Representative Mike Simpson, to bring healthy and abundant salmon runs back to the Colorado River system. Let me close with this. Our country's natural treasures define our identity as a nation. They're a birthright. They're a birthright. We have to pass down to generation after generation. They unite us. That's why our conservation work is so important. It provides a bridge to our past and to our future, not just for today, but for all ages. Rachel Carson, an environmentalist and an author, wrote, quote, those who contemplate the beauty of the earth find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. I'll share with all of you here today the enduring reverence for the power and the promise of the country's extraordinary natural wonders. And they are extraordinary. When I was vice president, I went to most of the national parks and I brought my family because I wanted them to see them going down the Colorado River, the Snake River, just incredible, incredible, incredible places. We've got to keep it going. We've got to keep the faith. We've got to remember who we are. We're the United States of America, and we owe to our children, our grandchildren, our great-great-grandchildren, and all to come what we have and what we can preserve. There's nothing beyond our capacity if we work together. So God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you so much. <laughs>